everyone, Josh here with X's Network, bringing y'all another Outer Plane video. And today we're going to be going over the best of the best when it comes to the Water Element Heroes. Now I will be doing Fire tomorrow, Earth the next day, and then Light and Dark um, in, the in the last two days of this little mini-series that we have going on. Now originally, I wanted to break these units all down individually. However, there is a risk that the meta might change. New units might, you know, be dropping in the game that might power creep these other heroes. We might get balancing changes like nerfs and buffs. Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe new content comes out that's going to be better suited to certain characters. It all depends. Who knows what's going to happen, right? So just to kind of avoid that, since doing one at a time would take a long, long time to get through a lot of the top heroes in the game, I decided we're going to go ahead and do these and group them by element. So today we will do water tomorrow we will do fire the next day we will do earth and then i might do light and dark together since there just isn't as many heroes in those two elements uh, that i consider you know top tier or worth mentioning so we'll probably pair those up together but today let's talk about the water heroes now the water heroes that we will be talking about today are going to be snow marion rin so that's the top and then down here we have cindy veronica and that's it so honorable mentions, because I do want to give a couple honorable mentions, because there are three here that are still very good. They're just kind of like on that second tier, not top tier, and top tier is kind of what we're focusing on today. That would be Lapless, who has an attack down, has a speed down, has an AoE uh, barrier that scales to attack, which is very, very nice. So Lapless is a very decent unit. Then we have um, Adelie, who's one of the better AoE damage dealers in the entire game. Um, if it wasn't for the way that her attack up buff happened on her skill 3, her ultimate, if it came before the attack and not after, she'd be in that top tier group because she'd be amazing in PvP. But because of that slight little, you know, little miscue in my opinion with how they designed her kit, she definitely is going to be in that, you know, higher second tier. Like, she would be in that top tier if it was for that little change. But as of right now, that's where she is. But still, if you're looking for a solid AoE damage dealer, Adelie's going to be solid for blue. But I'm sure a lot of you probably re-rolled and went for Rin anyway. So that kind of already been taken care of for a lot of you. But if you don't have Rin and you do get Adelie, it's not a bad compromise. And then Beth. She is our last honorable mention. She's going to also be super, super strong, especially if you have her exclusive equipment. If you could pair up with any other bleed hero, her skill two will go in and clear a lot of waves herself. She's going to be good for PvE content in that regard because she's going to be another strong blue uh, DPS and AoE DPS, especially with her EE. is going to allow her to take a lot of additional turns on waves and pair it up with a, a unit like Eliza, for example, She's going to be very, very strong in PvP. But the reliance on needing an EE and the reliance on needing other bleed heroes to really elevate her kit and get the full potential out of it, I have to put her in second tier as well. So those three heroes are all like what I would consider second tier in the water element, uh, especially. But I wanted to give them honorable mentions because I felt like they deserve it because they're not bad heroes by any stretch. They are just not quite the top of the top, right? Let's talk about Snow first. Now, Snow, I, I will say this all the time. I've been saying this since day one. Snow is by far the best starter hero in the game. Better than Lisha, better than Ava, and better than Kay. And it's not even close. She's better than them by a country mile. If you're Southern or if you live out here, you know, down here in the States, you, you know what that means. She's really, really good. So let's go over here to the abilities. Let's turn everything up. As you can see, what stands out right off the bat is, yes, she is, of course, going to be a ranger. So, she generates 20 action points at the start of the turn. She's also got 149 base speed, which makes her second tier in speed in the entire game. Just below 154, which is the highest base speed you can get. Which is, of course, going to be shared between four heroes right now. Sigma, Stella, Eliza, and, of course, Valentine. So she's right there, right under them, just a few speed lower. And with the speed RNG that we got, you know, there's some cases where she'll go sooner than that. So that's great. So 149 base speed, her entire kit scales to speed, which is good. She has um, attacks all enemies and reduce the target's priority by 25% on her ult, kind of similar 
to Valentine. So if you pair them up together, that's very, very powerful. And of course, her damage is proportional to speed because she scales speed. Skill 2 can also inflict freeze, which is very, very good. Now, with her burst ability, you can almost get a guaranteed freeze. And on her ultimate, with her exclusive equipment, her ultimate becomes an AoE freeze, 40% chance on top of the priority reduction. And with, you know, how fast she already is, the fact that she's also blue, so she's going to be good to do additional damage against units like Teo and Valentine, which you're going to see in the meta for PvP. She's going to be an incredible PvP unit. This is a top tier meta unit right here, and she's free, and she's a starter hero. And you can 5-star her in one day. Or two days if you're if you're playing a little bit slower, you know, more casual. But she's going to be an easy five star for a lot of you out there that are investing into her and building her up. Snow is a fantastic hero. Now let's go and talk about Marion. Now Marion, oh, she's an animal. All right, she she might be uh, in a league of her own. We're gonna find out very soon because I'm building her up right now. I didn't get to build her up as much as I wanted to in the SEA version of the game. I'm getting to build her up a lot more now here on the global side. I have her currently at 74. I have all of her skills at level 4 currently. I'm going to try and get her skill 2 and ultimate to um, skill level 5 maxed out as soon as I can. I will probably get her to level 80 tonight and limit breaker. Finally, uh, getting her where I need her to be. I already have her exclusive equipment unlocked. This is the only cursed hero available in the game right now. If you don't count Dark Stella, because we can't technically use Dark Stella. So as of right now, she is the only playable uh, curse hero that we have. And the way curse works, every time a curse tick goes off, it's between 3 or 4% of the enemy's max HP. And she can spam those curses, get 4 or 5 off at a time. Especially with her EE activated, bursting on her skill too. So she's going to be doing a ton of damage. And what's really cool about the way curse works... It's the best DPS thought we have right now because it doesn't scale to attack. It doesn't scale to HP or defense or speed or any other stats that we have that are already going to be kind of low at base levels anyways because this game doesn't really give us high stats per se that you might be used to in other turn-based games. It's scaling to the enemy's max HP. So that is very, very good. That means the higher the boss's HP, the more damage her curses will do and the more beneficial she will be to your team. Now her skill 1 has a 50% chance to inflict curse for 2 turns. Skill 2 attacks an enemy and has an 80% chance to reduce the target's defense. So she has a defense break on her skill 2. At level 3 burst you can apply 2 additional curses. And with her EE it's also on her skill 2 which will give you another 2 curses. So if you burst level 3 her, if she is a 5 star hero and you have your burst level 3 available, you can stack... Four curses and a defense break on the boss with one skill. One skill. And since her dot does not scale to her own stats, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We can build her like a bruiser. We can give her tons of HP and effectiveness. We can give her tons of speed or effectiveness. We can build her a multitude of ways to where she's either going to go multiple times, she's going to have more longevity because she'll have more HP, she'll be more tanky. We don't have to build her like a traditional DPS. She's going to be a DPS just by her dots alone and her ability to just apply all these curses. It's going to be fantastic. Now, her ultimate attacks all enemies and has a 100% chance to inflict curse on the target for two turns. So you get a curse from that. You can get up to four curses from this and you can get a curse from this. I mean, she's just throwing curses left and right. Um, maybe she's related to a truck driver because she's doing a lot of curses. All right, skill chain companion effect uh, after attacking has 100% chance to inflict curse on the target. So yes, she can just curse on everything. Literally everything. She hits an enemy, she can apply a curse. Fantastic. Now I'm not going to spend any time on Ren. We've already went over Ren so much here on the channel. We already know she's one of the top tier DPSs in the entire game. So we don't need to go over her. We've already covered her so much you can go check out any of our other videos concerning Ren, and you will get all the information you need on her and hopefully it'll be enjoyable and helpful okay so that leaves our final two and these are and i'm not going over these in any particular order of how strong they are versus the other i'm just going through them the way they're kind of listed here in the codex so keep that in mind 
Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Cindy, Cindy, Cindy. One of the best buffers, if not the best buffer in the entire game. She makes statting up, gearing up your other heroes so easy. So what does this girl do? What does she provide? She has a lot of good stuff, right? And I'm not just talking about her assets. She has 3,600 base HP, which is solid. 149 speed. So she's in that second tier of speed, just like Snow. Also a blue hero. So she's very fast, very durable, okay? And now let's go through her skill set. What makes her really amazing? So skill one, attacks an enemy, damage proportional to speed, whatever. Skill two. Now this is where we start getting into some crazy stuff with her. Increases all allies' attack and accuracy for two turns. That's giving your DPS 30% attack and 50% more accuracy, which can also help uh, units like Dolly, who are very strong AoE debuffers who could use some accuracy. It could also help, you know, getting around all that evasion crap that you might see on defensive teams in PvP or some high de uh, high um, evasion enemies like on the tower or in other PvE content. She's going to take care of all that for you. And it's also two stats less that you have to invest a lot into with your DPSs. So you can focus on other gear. And if you pair her up with Valentine, who's giving you that crit rate and that crit damage, your DPSs are living the life. And she's also going to be another strong meta PvP hero because of her speed and her abilities. But it, it doesn't stop there. She also can be cheesed further with other types of teams, including a potential stall team sometime down the road if we ever get the necessary units and stats to pull it off. Attacks all enemies and has a 100% chance to increase the duration of buffs for all allies. That is absolutely insane. You can increase her own, you can increase your buffs from her on her skill too, from Shine Crystal. You can increase the buffs from your Valentine. You can increase your shield buffs from other heroes. You can increase, um, you know, any buff that you want that's not like a special inherited trait or anything like that for particular heroes. If it's just a normal, applicable, applied buff, whatever she will enhance it in an additional turn which means if you guys and gals have a leo or a naru kang guess what your leo just now gave your entire team two turns of damage immunity your naru kang just got four turns of damage immunity and debuff immunity thanks to none other than cindy cindy is a very unique individual and again one of if not the best buffers in the entire game so she's going to be a unit that's definitely on my priority list to get built up as soon as I get my other units knocked out. She will definitely be getting built up as well. I built her up on SCA. I loved every bit of her. She's amazing. Cannot wait to use her again. Okay. And last but certainly not least, we have Veronica. Veronica, obviously, you know, is the best tank in the entire game. 4,419 health, 528 defense. Very good stats there for a bruiser type hero. Uh, with the new stat changes that we got from the subclass system a few weeks back before global dropped, her ultimate now does a lot more damage, like 50, 55% more damage. So she's now more of a bruiser type than she was originally where she was just purely a tank. Now she's a tank slash bruiser. Very, very nice. Her ultimate, of course, increases all allies defense for three turns and removes one buff from the target which would be very good against certain types of content that allows buffs to be removed chain passive after attacking has 100 chance to increase the defense of all allies for two turns this is coming clutch several times when i used her in sca version against especially chapter 10 uh hard mode some of those bosses that came in very clutch skill two removes two debuffs from the caster at the start of the turn grants a barrier to the ally with the lowest health for one turn the barrier's strength increases proportional to the caster's max health so that is the strongest type of barrier you can get in the game right now kate also has barriers that she can give to your team based on her max health as well max health being the highest stat you can achieve in the game um so obviously the uh barriers that are scaled to that are going to be the best barriers that you can get now, our skill one attacks an enemy and has a 70% chance to inflict taunt on the target for one turn. Activates a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack if the caster's defense is currently increased, which easily can be done with her skill three, obviously, 
or the chain ability so you can of course keep getting additional dual attacks to go off with your noah's your Rins, your francesca's whoever your top dps is in your team and ladies and gentlemen that is the best of the best when it comes to the water element in the game i hope you all enjoyed uh if you agree or disagree with my list let me know in the comment section below how would you rate these heroes uh like you know if you were to put them in order like which one of these heroes that we mentioned today would be your number one two three four five etc let me know all that and more and if you're using any of these heroes let me know how they're faring for you in certain types of content and how much you're enjoying it so far and how much you're enjoying the game overall i enjoy making content like this for y'all out there i feel like it's informative educational and a lot of fun so that's gonna be it for me don't forget to like subscribe tick notifications join us in the discord in the description below as always and follow us on twitter at xs network until next time peace